Now, from Climate Gate to the Kahui Twins, investigative journalist Ian Wishart is no stranger to controversy. In his latest book, he puts vitamin D under the microscope and asks whether our obsession with being sun safe is actually killing us. Ian joins us now, along with the Cancer Society's Dr Jan Pearson, who's joining us from Wellington. If I can start with you, please, Ian. Um, it's taken you seven years to yeah. compile this data. Tell us, in a nutshell, as concise as you can, basically what the crux of your argument about vitamin D is. The basic argument is that um, vitamin D has long been thought of just simply to relate to bone health. Um, was discovered about a century ago to be influential in getting rid of rickets in children. And all of our medical advice on vitamin D up until now has been based on bone health. And the amounts of vitamin D needed to correct bone deficiencies are actually quite low, which is why our daily recommended intake of vitamin D is quite low. However, in the last sort of uh, 10 to 15 years, scientists around the world have realised that vitamin D is actually unique. It's, it's not technically a vitamin, it's a hormone. And um, the body, every single organ in the body has what are called vitamin D receptors that beg for vitamin D input. Now, for example, for pregnant women, your fetus, your developing baby, is desperate for vitamin D for brain development. And there's a study just been published in Spain last week that shows that if you don't have vitamin D during pregnancy, your child has a higher risk of a lower IQ and poor motor skills at the age of 14 months. Um, and studies like this are being repeated all over the world that w the lack of vitamin D is uh, creating major health issues for our planet, it's creating major behavioural issues for, for kids and so forth. Uh, and so the world attention is now focused on vitamin D is have we become so sun averse that we're putting our health at risk at a much greater level? Now there's a study in the US and, and some commentators from the vitamin D research uh, community have pointed out that for every life that's saved through the melanoma slip slop slap campaign, we're losing about 10 lives through preventable cancers, heart disease and other conditions that are related to vitamin D lack. So we are killing more people in effect by saying don't get the sun than we are by slipping on the sunscreen. Uh, Dr Jan Pearson, I've got to bring you in there. I'd like your reaction to that, please. Uh, we're killing more people with our slip, slop, slap message? No, we're absolutely not. A lot of the research that Ian's talking about is taking place in Europe and that is not the same sort of climate that we have here. We have a much higher ultraviolet radiation level here and therefore we're more at risk of developing skin cancer. The other thing is a lot of the research he's referring to has found associations or correlations but that is different than cause and effect. The research that we still stand by is in the consensus statement we developed with the Ministry of Health which says that it is mainly bone health at the moment that is certainly been proven to benefit from vitamin D. Although I must say I saw in the paper on Friday that Dr Robert Scragg is doing a controlled trial research to have a look at cardiovascular health and vitamin D which, we, which will be fantastic when it comes out. How do you respond to that, Ian? Oh, um, very basically, easy. your research is, is yeah. in the Northern Hemisphere. I mean, we spoke about this before. The sun here is very harsh. Yeah, it is. And there's plenty of studies from across the world. And, uh, in fact, the studies in New Zealand and Australia, because of our high UV rates, we do have the highest rates of melanoma in the world. But we have the best survival rates in the world. And that was one of the clues that gave vitamin D researchers uh, the information that they needed to show that vitamin D or sunlight was having a protective effect against melanoma fatality. But I would say this to, to Jan. On, so the sun is protecting you from the getting sun, The studies are showing the sun cancer. is protective. Uh, there are studies out of Europe, out of North America, out of Britain, uh, and also out of New Zealand and Australia, which show that people who have higher levels of vitamin D in their blood or are getting more sun have less risk of dying from melanoma or other cancers. But the point I'd make to Jan is, she says, well, OK, this information, this, this evidence is only observational. Well, the entire anti-smoking campaign that the Cancer Society has had for decades is based on observational studies. No one was sitting there force-feeding babies cigarettes in a controlled random trial to see if they developed lung cancer 30 years hence. Um, they did the, it to monkeys, though. Yeah, but not to, not to humans. And the same thing goes with melanoma. There is not one randomised, controlled, double-blind study on sunscreen that shows that melanoma is protective... Uh, sorry, that sunscreen is protective against melanoma. We're basing our entire public health campaigns on observational studies. What Jan's saying is her observational studies are better than the ones that are coming out of the rest of the world, but I disagree. What do you say to that, Jan? I think what I picked up from that is that sunscreen doesn't actually have any effect on, on melanoma. That's yeah, correct, Yeah, that's right. Certainly some of the research that Ian has cited in his book say that people with fair skin have higher rates of melanoma. Um, pe uh, sorry, people that use sunscreen have higher rates of melanoma. Those people also have fair skin, and we know that that is a risk of higher rates of melanoma. Yes, but the point is the sunscreen is not protecting those people with fair skin from melanoma, and that's the key. 
but it stops us from getting sunburnt. Isn't that the yeah. same thing, Jan? What's the, what's the... Well, our messages are that sunscreen is one of the th things that you would use to protect your skin, that in New Zealand people do need to protect their skin between the hours of 10 and 4 in summer months, and especially if you have fair skin. But you use clothing, hats, seek shade, and are careful to make sure that you don't get sunburnt and sun damage. And we know that it's the sun damage for your, on your skin that causes melanoma and all the other skin cancers that are not registered and therefore we don't really know how big that problem is. If we're being honest about this, we have spent 30 years with a slip slop safe message and most people would be using sunscreen to protect them against melanoma. Last week the Melanoma Foundation came out and said people are not using enough sunscreen to protect them from melanoma. There is not one study in the world, not one credible study that shows sunscreen protects you from melanoma. What is the message that the Cancer Society, the Melanoma Foundation, the Ministry of Health are trying to put out to the public of New Zealand? It's a crock. Where did you get your research from, Jan? I, I trust the, the researchers that we work with and the international Name one study, Jen. Name one study. Name one credible study. I'm sorry, study. I, I, don't have, I don't have those studies at my fingertips. I certainly, yes, well, your book has different evidence than the Ministry of Health well, the, and the Cancer for, for Society. For start, Jen, that the Harvard, Harvard University, for example, here's another thing that the Ministry of Health and the Cancer Society have done. They've redefined the level of vitamin D deficiency to make it seem like New Zealanders aren't deficient. For example, Jan has said on radio last week, that uh, only 5% of New Zealanders are vitamin D deficient based on most recent studies that she's quoting from. That's because the, the de definition of deficiency in New Zealand is half the level internationally. Harvard University, for example, their School of Medicine says uh, we are deficient if we have less than uh, 50 nanomoles of um, vitamin D in our blood. The New Zealanders say it's 25 nanomoles, so half the level. If we take the internationally accepted level of deficiency, New Zealanders are 32% deficient in vitamin D and about 70% insufficient in total. So three quarters of us that's don't have enough specific. vitamin D. So yeah. there's, a, and there's, studies there's, a test. Yeah. there's a test that you yeah. can tell you you're deficient. Yes. Why, why You seem to be demonising the Cancer Society. I'm sure they have everyone's best interests at heart. Oh, look, I'm, I'm sure they do as well, and this is not personal to the Cancer Society, but what I object to and what I've covered in the book and attacked in great detail is that the Cancer Society has a massive conflict of interest. They make money from marketing sunscreen. They make millions of dollars and have made millions of dollars over the past decade from marketing sunscreen. The Melanoma Foundation in New Zealand, Australia, the US is sponsored by sunscreen manufacturers. It's a bit like Big Tobacco sponsoring the lung cancer charity and saying, if you use more of our sponsor's product, it'll protect you from lung cancer. The truth is there is not one credible study in the world that shows sunscreen protects you from melanoma. But every summer, the Cancer Society, the Ministry of Health, the melanoma foundations around the world are telling us, use more sunscreen. In the book, I'm saying, wake up, the emperor has no clothes, here's the evidence. How do you respond to that, Jan? You're financed by, by the equivalent of Big Tobacco. I, w I think that that is a, a terrible thing to say. Um, the, the amount of money that we, we have um, had in terms of income from our sunscreen is around 1.6 million over 12 years. We can never have enough funding to do the work, the broad range of work we do to support people with cancer and prevent cancer. With respect, Jen, I, I, I appreciate the work that you're doing. Okay, and I do appreciate the work the Cancer Society does, but this position on vitamin D is archaic. Our definitions are archaic. The position of the Cancer Society and the Ministry of Health is archaic. The studies are in the book. People can read for themselves. And if they choose to say, well, New Zealand's got it right, then great. But I think they'll find that the, the evidence from Harvard University and others around the world is absolutely compelling. Ian, can I just say, you, you make some quite sweeping statements that it's, it's a lack of vitamin D is responsible for everything from Alzheimer's to allergies to the flu to various different yeah, types well, of cancer. There's, there's, it's it's, here's another example. New Zealand says there are no uh, random controlled trials in, on vitamin D. In fact, there was one done on influenza in Asia that showed that uh, people who were given vitamin D had a much lower risk of getting uh, flu pandemics and so forth, or asthma attacks. So there are plenty of actual random controlled studies on vitamin D, but this obsession with vitamin D is bone health issue and we're not going to recommend it for anything else is archaic. Right, did your research show that uh, Muslim ladies that wear a full burqa and people, the Inuit people in Alaska suffer with these maladies more because well, of lack of vitamin D. The Inuit don't because they eat wild caught fatty fish and reindeer meat <laughs> but, uh, but certainly Islamic people uh, wearing the full burqa do and that's covered in the book and I do cover skin types in, in the book. 
what I've done is I've, I've, I've gone through and I have more information on there than the Cancer Society does about what skin types are at risk from, from skin cancer, uh, what hair colour, eye colour has to do with your risk of de developing melanoma. And I've tried to put it all there so people can read for themselves. And by all means, um, stay safe this summer. Do not get burnt. Um, use sunscreen to protect your skin from ageing issues. Uh, use skin, sunscreen to protect you from minor skin cancers. But do not go out onto the beach slapping yourself with sunscreen thinking you're covered against melanoma. You are not. Wear a shirt, do something else, use an umbrella, but do not rely on sunscreen. Well, on that note, Dr Jan Pearson, uh, I'd like to thank you for joining us from Wellington and Ian Wishart. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you. For more information on Ian's book and the vitamin D debate, which I'm sure is going to be a hotbed of controversy, go to our website. Coming up, Sarah Chatwin's here to make us all happy. I'm thinking she's coming probably with a big old cake. <laughs>